Miss Denise has something beautiful hand crafts. And my Abby doll just arrived. Uh, you know, I've never done an unboxing video. I've unboxed all kind of fiber items. It just, you know, it never really occurred to me to do one. But I'm really excited about this doll here. Uh, as you might know, pretty much this fiber and everything else I do stems from my love of history and historical methods. And so I love historical clothing. And when I can, I make things for myself, you know, with the historical knitting and some historical sewing. But for the most part, I don't really have any place to wear and go with some of the more elaborate historical costumes. So instead, when I discovered the American Girl dolls, I it seemed like a really good opportunity to, you know, make historical clothing as I can make pretty much as many garments as I want and keep them. They're not going to take up as much room as, you know, people size garments. And I can swap them on the clothing when I want to. And they're not terribly expensive to get a little bit of fabric and make the garments. It's like a great idea. And, you know, the American Girl dolls are a little pricey. And uh, I've looked at them, you know, once in a while I've never got one. I got an 18 inch doll from Michaels and she's been my test dolly. And so finally I just went ahead and got an American Girl doll. And then this one I got off eBay, but uh, it was new in the box basically. So it's pretty much like having a brand new doll. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the box open. Okay, so here's the Eddie doll in her packaging and true to what the buyer said, she is new in the box because uh, a lot of the reviews on YouTube about new Eddie in the box is that uh, her head is turned sideways in the box. So she's new and in this box. This one right here is, as you can see, is the Be Forever Eddie Walker, uh, not the original one that's retired. And so if you are not familiar with the differences, um, I could probably link a video down there so you can see. The biggest difference is that her meat dress is different. The meat Addy dress for the original is that pink and white striped dress. This one is the blue dress, which looks a lot more like her school outfit than um, the meat dress. And uh, since I don't have any other American Girl dolls, I'm actually going to compare her to the doll I got from Michaels. Okay, so I have the Addy doll and the Michaels brand doll and the Michaels brand doll is older probably and she's been out in the garage for at least a year so she's a little dustier and so you can't really say much uh, about she's just a little dusty but okay so from what I can tell first of all let me turn the camera is that for this particular doll, it just seems to me like the Addy doll's face is a little fuller. And she's got a little more neck there than this doll does. And you know what? It just seems the Addy doll is just a little bigger. She is, her limbs are thicker. Her limbs are definitely harder. This you can kind of push down on and like it's like hollow. Uh, but the Addy doll is a, is a stiffer mold, uh, basically. Um, I mean, that those, particularly the eyelashes, you know, she's a little older, so it's kind of hard to tell there. What I really like about the Addy doll is the quality of this clothing. And that's one of the things I really want to get a good look at, is the quality of this doll clothing. I really like she's got the little bloomers on and these shoes are just adorable they are fabric and they have a hard sole on the bottom of them and they velcro in the back and you know that makes sense of course because um, you know you have a child you don't want to have the stiff 
buttons and things trying to button them. We're going to make them easy to come on and off her cute little shoes. Let me, now the earrings she has on are fixed. Let me turn her over. She can see her back. In the back of this dress. Now, this doll does not have a, a shift. The Felicity doll uh, had a shift as part of her undergarments. I don't know if she had a shift on as part of her clothing. I have to look at that outfit again. But historically speaking, she should have more underwear on than she actually has. So I'm going to rectify that by making her a shift. Because <laughs> that is the purpose, after all, is the, the historical garment. I really like this. I really like those boots. Okay, so anyway, besides the fact that Eddie's a little bit taller, a little bit thicker, a little bit harder in construction, look at those cute dimples over on the side. The biggest difference between the two is the hair. Now, let me show you this doll's hair. She has some plugs. It's rooted. So now i got to take it apart. And it's not a full scalp. Okay, it's rooted all the way around. And then there's plugs in between. And it comes together pretty nicely when you look at it from the top. Addie's hair, on the other hand, the American Girl dolls have wigs. Oh, I don't want to mess her hair up too much. I know they, they talked really quickly about the texture of the old Addie's hair being more texturized. And the new Addie's hair having a little less texture. And the, the Melody doll, which is from the 50s, having even less texture. And I know there's some people who were kind of not happy about that but when you think about it as much as you want to portray portray afro-american Afro hair you also want a doll where the hair is workable and speaking from experience my hair is not exactly workable um, and it's not a texture that is easily combable or brushable or stylable so um, for me, that would not make a terribly great doll. So you want to try to be considerate and authentic to the ethnicity of the doll. But at the same token, you need a doll that can be worked. You know, if you were to brush my hair the way you would brush an Addy doll hair, uh, then you would have a kinky, uh, coily mess of doll hair. That would just be unsightly. So, yeah, I, I don't mind that the textures change. If that's what it took to make the doll uh, a little more user-friendly, then I'm, I'm not at all insulted. Okay, so anyway, uh, she has actually a full wig. So when you look into the scalp, that's a full wig cap on. And to me, that allows for more versatility of hair design. And it, it just looks better. Because, you know, when you're doing the hair, you don't have these big brown patches of scalp. You kind of, you have a nice kind of wig scalp. That's the color of the hair. And it allows the hair to be uh, manipulated. Look how nice that is. And if something ever goes wrong, and uh, I was thinking about buying a doll, a Felicity doll, where the hair was badly damaged... I, you can remove the wig and replace the wig with something comparable. Uh, now, there is an a American Girls Hospital where you would send your doll to have things fixed. And supposedly when you have a, a hair issue or a, a missing eye or something like that, a lot of times they just replace the entire head. I'm not really sure how that works with, like, the retired dolls or the Be Forever dolls or, you know, the ones that are limited. I guess they keep those molds somewhere. And so they would just, instead of replacing her hair, they would just simply um, give her a whole new head. But there are other places online to just purchase uh, wigs that are similar, and you can DIY it if that's what you choose. Alrighty, now... Moving away from Addie, let's talk about this doll who has no name because I don't usually give dolls names. Here's what I'm working on. I took some pictures 
when I started from my blog, so there'll be a full write up on this. I decided that I wanted to make something historical. And I wanted a pair of bloomers. Now, the Samantha doll has bloomers for its bike riding. She's a bike riding outfit. And it's got the bloomers and a, and a shirt waist. And then she has gaiters on. And the gaiters don't look unsimilar to Eddie's boots. Now, that outfit has been retired. And there is a, was, I should say was, a second outfit for the Be Forever Samantha. But that one also has been retired. Uh, and when you look on eBay for the prices, I mean, we're talking about $150, for some of these outfits, which is the price of the doll. And I figured I could do it myself. So what I did is I took the, the Molly pant pattern which is a part of the American Girl historical pattern collection and modify it. it. I widened it a bit using the Kirsten's, was it Kirsten? I think it's the Kirsten's pantaloons. So I modified it using the Kirsten's pantaloons or pantalettes. And then I shortened it, cropped off two inches. And so these guys are just waiting for um, their final stitch because they've got the gold thread which is their mock-up stitch it allows me to see the thread carefully and pull it in and out and then she's going to get her waist belt put on with a little cute accent and this blouse came from Samantha's maybe it was Samantha's party dress basically and so I just took the top half of the party dress and this is it. It needs the sides stitched up, pulled it over and, and uh, hemmed and finished, hemming down here and hemming for the closure in the back. Her party dress has a placard on it. It's a lace placard. And if you're familiar with Edwardian clothing, there's a lot of lace. Um, oh boy, what are they called? You know what the word escapes me now, but basically it's when you do the insert panels and you cut the gown part and you put those lace inserts. Um, so anyway, I didn't have a big piece of lace big enough. And I didn't for my Edwardian shirt either, which I posted on Instagram. What I did is I took the strips of lace and laid them out uh, using uh, a diagram. There's a, a historical seamstress. Ooh, I think her site might actually be called So Historically. And basically what she did was she showed how to lay out a half circle pattern and then how you lay the lace down the strips around that pattern and sew it until you have a yoke for your Edwardian gowns. And that's why you can make that lace insert yoke. So I did the same thing for an Edwardian shirt that I made a couple years ago. And I did the same thing here. I just laid it down onto the placard pattern. And then I laid out the lace and stitched it on and then stitched that whole placard onto the front of here. I might put a few dots there to kind of simulate pearls, it depends, or to simulate buttons. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and you will be able to see the finished uh, outfit on my blog. Okay, that's it for my American Girl doll and uh, historical sewing adventures. Now I'm going to go and make myself some adult size skirts and things. You can see the fiber, the fabric in the background. Then we'll go back to spinning. All right, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.